I'm Indy Nidell, and this is Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer all your questions about the First World War. Yavuz Karolyu writes, Hi, Indian team. Hello. Uh, what about the Ottoman monarch? Who was the Ottoman monarch, is it called Sultan, during World War I? Was he or she related to the other monarchs, such as the Tsar or the Kaiser? What decisions did the Ottoman monarch make that altered the course of the war? The Ottoman Sultan, Sultan it was, was uh, Mehmet V, who, although he was 70 years old, uh, when the Ottomans joined the war, had only been the reigning monarch for six years. He was put on the throne uh, in 1909, actually, as a result of the Young Turks Revolution the previous year. He had actually taken his own brothers, the autocratic Abdel Hamid's throne, after he was deposed in the revolution. Mehmet was not related to any of the other monarchs in Europe, mainly due to the fact that there weren't that many intermarriages between Christians and Muslims at the time. In fact, uh, he had led a very sheltered life, which was the custom for many Ottoman monarchs. The Ottoman royal family was very protective of any potential heirs to the throne in order to ensure stability if the Sultan died. So Mehmet spent around 30 years within the confines of the palace in Constantinople, and for nine of those years, he was in solitary confinement. Um, he ruled as a constitutional monarch, meaning really he exercised no real power since the uh, Ottoman parliament did the real decision making. Now, after the coup of 1913, Mehmet effectively became the puppet of the three pashas, Enver Pasha, Jamal Pasha, and Talat Pasha. Uh, his most famous act, though, was officially declaring a jihad against the Entente powers in the spirit of uniting all Muslims within the empire, although this turned out to have very little effect. Mehmet died on July 13th, 1918, so before he could witness the final downfall of his empire. His brother Mehmet VI was the Sultan when the Ottoman government finally surrendered to the Allies. He saw the partition of the rest of the Ottoman Empire between Britain and France and everything. And he later died in exile as the last sultan after the, Ottoman after the Ottoman government abolished the monarchy in 1922. Rex Crum says, hi, Indian everyone. Hey, hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, love the show and have been watching since the beginning. I have a question about how or if the war was an issue during the presidential election of 1916, was there growing pressure on Woodrow Wilson or Charles Evans Hughes to make the war a campaign issue? I know we got into the war for real in 1917, but I'm curious about where we stood politically 100 years ago. Thanks. Okay. The Great War, the First World War, was one of the most contentious issues of the 1916 United States presidential election. Public opinion in the U.S had already started to shift towards the Entente by this time uh, after hearing about you know, the atroc atrocities committed by German troops in France and Belgium and things like the sinking of the Lusitania. The main reason for hearing that and not about any Allied failings was that the British had cut the Germans' transatlantic telegraph cable. So all news from Europe about the war was routed through Britain. In spite of this, though, the majority of Americans still wish to continue to remain neutral. Wilson's political campaign was centered around he being the one who kept America out of the war in the first place. His opponent, the Republican Charles Hughes, criticized Wilson and said America should do more to prepare for at least the possibility of being dragged into the war. This helped solidify Wilson's image as the bringer of peace. Woodrow Wilson marginally won the election as a result. Dimitar Zolov writes, what did the Germans, Prussians, Austrians think of each other? And did they treat one another differently on the battlefield? Enjoying your show a lot. Awesome work by you guys. Thank you very much. Um, on the surface, at least, the Germans and the Austro-Hungarians were portrayed as brothers in arms. But the reality was far more complicated. Um, since the Austrians had been defeated by the Prussians in 1866, they hadn't really been able to forget the pain of losing their hegemony in the German-speaking world. And as citizens of a relatively young nation, the Germans considered Austria-Hungary to be past its sell-by date, and they saw themselves as the future. 
the Austro-Hungarians were bitter at having to take second place to the Germans, sure. So this relationship often meant that both sides misjudged each other's abilities. The Germans often underestimated the capability of the Austro-Hungarians, and the Austro-Hungarians often overestimated the strengths of the Germans. Both obviously also had different war aims from each other. And at the beginning of the war, this was pretty evident. Germany was desperate to defeat France as quickly as possible, while Austria-Hungary devoted most of her efforts towards destroying Serbia. The Germans were particularly annoyed to hear that it would take 14 days for Austria-Hungary to mobilize its army because most men were taking part in the harvest. The Austrians were irked when the Germans demanded that a common high command be established in 1916, which effectively put the German generals on top and left the Austro-Hungarian generals with little say. Uh, Austria-Hungary lost a lot of its independence, especially in foreign policy. This even led uh, Austrian Army Chief of Staff Konrad von Hotzendorf to call Germany our secret enemy. If you'd like to see Germany's push into France in August 1914, you can click here for episodes about that. Um, do not forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time because we're awesome, right? All right, great.